the whole crew, shawty brain. When the money talks, what is there to say? Yeah! What up, guys, and welcome back to another one. Today, we're back out here for another shotgun video. You guys have absolutely been loving these videos, and so have I. I have fun doing them. It's extremely interesting to obviously not only you guys, but it's interesting to get out here safely, do these experiments, which if you're new to these videos, y'all, these are videos of theories of situations, if that makes any sense, of things that could go wrong in the field. If you're duck hunting, if you're hunting with a shotgun, just random things that could go wrong. So in all in all, these are safety videos. But oh man, oh, oh the old TriStar, look at her. I just oiled her all up, cleaned her, completely took her apart, and oh boy, I cleaned her up. It's a bit shiny clean on the inside. The last video was the wet shotguns theory. Do wet shotguns shoot? And if they do, are they unsafe? Well, the water just completely gummed up the inside of the thing like you all seen. And so now I cleaned it, she's ready to go. We shouldn't have any trigger or firing pin issues last time. Man, it just wouldn't strike the primer hard enough once it got all that H2O up in there. But before we get started, check out that hat, y'all. Look at them cup ducks. Oh man, they doing it dirty. This hat is actually available. I will link it down in the description below. Go pick one up. It supports the channel. It helps me bring y'all more of these videos. And I'm sorry for the noise. This thing will just slap in the wind. Yeah, so if you hear that, that's what the noise is. Every video I ask for your guys' ideas. Hey, if you guys have an idea for a video, a safety video, put it down below and you guys have came through, let me tell you what. And you also have come through in hitting that like button. I think every one of these videos is well over a thousand likes. So, so if we can keep that trend going, go hit that button right now for your boy. But you guys suggested some awesome, and I mean incredible video ideas. I cannot thank you guys enough. That is what we're doing today. That's one of the ideas. So we're gonna take the theory of the 20 gauge shell in front of the three inch shell, right? So there's two things, two tests, two video ideas, basically in one today. So the first one is we're gonna replicate the 20 gauge in front of the three inch shell because last time it was either getting shot out like a slug or it was getting obliterated, right? Well, a lot of you in the comments were like, Bobby, put a piece of plywood behind that thing. So whatever's, what all's coming out of that barrel and we're gonna be able to see what that 20 gauge shell is actually doing. So that's test number one. And the reason why I'm gonna do that one first is because the second test is probably gonna demolish the old TriStar. I know, I know, I said that like, Oh, probably two or three videos worth. I'm like, guys, this test is probably gonna be the old girl's last day. But she has literally stood strong. I cannot believe it. So the second test is kind of gonna be a series of events. It's still gonna be the same theory of having a 20 gauge shell in front of a three inch 12 gauge shell. But what we're gonna do, just a handful of you guys uh, actually recommended this and I thank you so much. It's a great, and I mean great idea, is to actually space the 20 gauge shell out from the 12 gauge shell, which will obviously be in the chamber, space them both out. That way we can get some velocity, some energy before it connects with that 20 gauge shell because it's actually true. So actually, if you think of that happening, if I was to accidentally load a 20 gauge shell in my 12 gauge, I would probably dip the barrel down towards the ground to load another one. But what's gonna happen is that 20 gauge shell is actually gonna fall down the barrel and it's gonna stop wherever the barrel tightens up. So in theory, this is probably actually the right way to do it. But like I said, I'm gonna stop talking. We're gonna do this one first because there's a pretty big potential that it's gonna blow the barrel to smithereens halfway down. Now, if she does last through the second test, through this video, I have one of the most requested videos and that is firing that bad boy with the barrel in the water. Now, regardless, if this one, if this bad boy blows up today, we're gonna get us another gun to, to keep these videos rolling. But that should be the next video. So if you guys are liking these videos yet again, give me a thumbs up right before we get started here. Thank you all for your support. Seriously, I'm having so much fun with y'all doing this. 
All right, got her all set up. So first test, number one is gonna be identical to the last video. We're gonna use Federal, am Federal Ammo Blue Box. These are three inch number twos. For certain, my favorite load for the season. So here we go, put the 20 in first then put the 12 gauge in behind her. Now, like I said, I just cleaned that bad boy with the plywood wall in three, two, one. Woo-hoo, that was loud. I had a lot of percussion coming back from that wall. Wow. What do we got here? Everything fell over like normal, but that's where it went through. Holy smokes. Well, that tells me we're gonna have to move this board way back. We have to move it way back. For one, the board's so close that, heck, the shot could even be coming out in that tight of a pattern. I mean, that's only like two, three foot away. So I'm gonna move it back pretty far. All right, we got her loaded and reset up here. We're sitting at a good 10 yards, probably 10 yards. That should be perfect. And we got her straight and narrow right down the center all right this is where you guys got to drop your comments down below what are your guesses going to happen are we going to see anything from that 20 gauge shell i don't know if this is going to stop it i might have to get two sheets of plywood it may not be thick enough even at this distance the thing if it's coming out of there like a slug this one sheet of plywood is not going to stop it oh well been having some technical difficulties from the tr from the old tristar telling you even though I I mean I cleaned it oiled it extremely well and it's still misfiring so three two one there we go finally look at that oh we got a telltale sign right here look at that that is the 20 gauge I can guarantee it and that is the shot that's the pattern from the three inch shotgun shell and that is i can promise you that is the 20 gauge shell going through there like a slug i mean that's apparent right am i wrong because you have all your concentrated pellets right here you have a very very few lingerers up here i think the top one is right here actually but here's your strong pattern from the three inch and that right there is a slug 20 gauge slug it is coming out like a slug there's no ifs ands or buts about it um still i've been looking here i cannot cannot find our 20 gauge slug if it's going to be anywhere it's going to be up in here i'm going to do some searching i'd really like to find it i literally just found it check that out look at that look at the look at the primer Look at that whole brass. I mean, it's just, the entire brass is just shoved in, completely deformed. Look where all the BBs hit. I found it. Guess where I found it? On the back side of that shed that's already 30 yards away. Because the truck and the, and the gun's on the other side, probably a good 45 yards from here. And went another 20 yards that way. From there, boom, boom, all the way over there. Wow. That is amazing. Well, if you ever need a, no, don't ever. Don't ever redo these videos, ever. That's why they're here, is for safety. So, uh, what I am really, really happy about is we just solved it in two different ways. I was skeptical. I was like, man, is this thing just getting, I, I really did think in the last video that this thing was just getting obliterated and completely disintegrated in the chamber, in the barrel come to find out it is definitely a slug now it obviously went off that's the thing is that sucker definitely fired at some point i'm sure it's right at the beginning right when that 12 gauge goes off this probably does as well but it probably comes out still almost like a slug you know just called bound together this was our first shot everything came out in one itty bitty pattern we backed up 10 yards and this is what happened so again, here's our 12 gauge and here's our 20 gauge. Wow, that's cool. So if you like these videos yet again, guys, you got to hit that thumbs up button. Let's get this video over 2000 likes. It'd be awesome if you guys made that happen. I am so happy that I finally figured out what was going on. Now, 
off to the second test here. And this is actually the most realistic situation by far. If you were to accidentally pull a 20 gauge shell out of your pocket with a 12 gauge in your hand, tip your gun down, put it in the chamber, this is gonna fall down that barrel and it should stop, right? Then you're gonna load somehow, you know, accidents happen, a 12 gauge shell behind it. Now we have some distance. So guys, how we're gonna act this out is I'm actually going to, so I'm actually gonna take the gun out of the vise here and I'm actually gonna tip the gun like this. So this is just like if we were gonna load a 20 gauge shell, it dropped, oh yeah, it dropped probably to about right here somewhere, probably right here. We're gonna load that 12 right behind it. Put her back in the vise real gently so that tw that 20 gauge shell don't move. So I want it to stay right where it's at. But this should be the most realistic situation. We all load our guns like this usually with the muzzle facing the ground. So this should be the realistic scenario in this whole 20 gauge in the 12 gauge series of videos. So, guys, this is where you really have to drop your comments. You gotta drop your guesses. Don't be shy, drop them comments. Let's guess, let's, what do you guys think is gonna happen? My idea is, if that shell is down here far enough, my theory is it's gonna go boom. This, this is probably, my guess, this is the last day for old TriStar. She's been a good girl. You've been a champion. Thank you so much. I love you. I will miss you. We're going to put you up on the wall in the shop. So we'll never forget about you. Oh, I've been having troubles with it misfiring. I'm really hoping we're just going to get one, one good go right at the beginning. But again, guys, drop your comments down below. In three, two, one, let's hope it fires. Oh, that sounded different. Oh God, it flew. Okay. What do you guys think happened? Absolutely nothing! Are you kidding me? Is you hot? Like, what's going on here, girl? I heard some crazy noises and that was because it blew that thing over. I'm telling you what, if there's ever been a champ of a gun, it's this here TriStar. Oh, well, I got some theories here, guys. So my first theory is Let's go back to the mud in the barrel. Now, as you can tell, a, a lot of my new viewers here on this video, if you weren't here for the, for the very start of this series of videos, our first one was when I used to have choke threads and a choke in here is we did mud in the tip of the barrel. Basically, it mimicked if you ever stumbled, jabbed your barrel, didn't think about it, pulled up to shoot a bird, and boom. That's why we're missing the tip. So, what I think is happening here, guys, it's fully unloaded, you know, completely bolts back. When you look down it, I, I highly doubt you guys can see that down there. I'm trying to, if you can see in there, the, the barrel is completely just scratched. And that is obviously due to that brass just being shoved down there because the, the size of that brass is bigger than from about here down. So, it's literally just bending it and shoving it through there. So what I'm gathering here is, is that when we did the mud in the barrel, I mean, it was clogged in there hard and tight. Nothing was gonna escape. It, it managed to build up so much pressure because it was actually plugged. This isn't plugging it enough. So, it could be two things. Maybe it's just not plugging enough and this is just sliding by, you know, just enough to not mushroom the barrel or explode it. Or TriStar just has some really tough barrels. But what I'm seeing is the barrel is really scratched up due to that brass being shoved through there. So guys, I mean, we've tried a lot of different angles in this and a lot of different videos. And by no means is it safe to ever try this stuff at home. And I would say from what we've gathered, Guys, always, always, always be safe. Be careful about loading your shotguns. Always know what you're putting in your gun as far as ammunition goes. 
But all in all, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoying the series of shotgun safety videos. If you are enjoying these videos, you gotta hit that thumbs up button for your boy right now. Let's get this video over 2,000 likes. Right when it hits 2,000, guess what's gonna happen? We're gonna do literally one of the most requested videos so far. And we're gonna put the tip of this bad boy in water and pull the trigger. I just got off the phone with my good buddy Dan over at Federal Ammo and he said, Bob, if you want to uh, do some damage to that TriStar, he said, you need to put the tip of the gun in the water. And you know, when you think about it, it's really not that unlikely for that to happen. You could accidentally hit the trigger with it pointed down. Let's say you're standing in the marsh and the tip of that barrel is in the water. So. It's not too far-fetched. But if you guys want to see that video, let me know down below and hit that thumbs up button. I know I've been telling you guys to hit that thumbs up button a lot, but it helps. It helps so much. Thank you guys for helping me. Thank you guys for supporting me. If it wasn't for all you guys, we wouldn't be out here having fun and reminding not only myself, but you guys to always stay safe. But you guys need to be sure you hit that notification bell down there. It'll notify you when the old barrel in the water video goes up. But subscribe if you haven't. We will see y'all on the next one. Peace.